Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Friday, right? Finally Friday, October 13th, 2023. Doesn't sound so scary until you say Friday the 13th, 2023. All right, it's about 12.22 p.m. here, California time. And uh, yeah, no doubt it is Friday the 13th out here. I'm going to probably stay inside. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that or not. I don't I better not jinx it. Um, latest activity shows a 0, 0.0 showing up here across the Mediterranean. Not for sure why it's at zero. Maybe they're adjusting the magnitude. All right, latest activity here on the USGS map, uh, looking at Southern California here and the West Coast in general. Let's see what we got for the past two, uh, uh, the 2.5 here in the last 24 hours. Seen a handful of earthquakes out here. Uh, looks like majority of these from yesterday. We did see one more 2.8 here. About 7 o'clock this morning so far, just off of the plate boundary here, into this little ridge off of the uh, uh, the uh, Mendocino fault line. That's the uh, only one today so far, above 2.5. Aside from that, most of this movement out here, generally microquake activity uh, stirring up. Got a little bit of activity stretching across the plate boundary into the Diablo range. Uh, might want to watch this area. Uh, whenever we see something like that, it's normally a sign of specific regional stress here uh, within that plate boundary. The last one here shows a 1.4 up north near Hollister. But yesterday, like I said, we did see a little bit of swarming going on off that plate boundary. Southern California, handful of smaller earthquakes over the last 24 hours. No major swarms to take note of. A little bit of activity up into the Pacific Northwest up here. Uh, 2.0, 12 kilometers deep. Right around the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And a handful of smaller quakes out there in the last 24 hours. Uh, a little bit of uptick going on here across the Idaho area and portions of the Wyoming range. That's this mountain range here south of the Grand Teton area. Seen quite a few ones. And uh, let's see what else we got over there in the last 24 hours. Um, some twos in there as well within this whole mix uh, nothing really spectacular going on across Yellowstone. I don't think we got any swarming going on. Uh, a live look at the seismograph station there at Lake Yellowstone shows calm conditions. Um, and these seismograph stations are still currently all offline. There's None of these are working. And the University of Utah is the folks that uh, monitor and report this data. And it's just, they're offline. Uh, and I'm not for sure why, but, uh, well, they said something about working on, uh, some, uh, some networking issues up there and you can see they're not working. Although Timothy found one, uh, I'm not for sure exactly where the USGS is getting this information from, but it does look like it's from, uh, for Yellowstone captures seismograph station here. Here's some of that earthquake activity in Idaho, um, last 24 hours though but shows mainly small very small microquake activity around yellowstone aside from these uh, a little bit larger quakes away from the area all right uh, a look at the rest of the map here texas oil fields getting hit out there one earthquake outside of the dallas fort worth area near jacksboro 2.2 uh let's see what we got out there yep i already see it quite a few oil fields out there quick look at the satellite view we'll probably Confirm that. That's what these are. Well, there's quite a few windmills out there mixed in with these oil fields as well, huh? Crazy. Either oil fields or windmills. Next would be uh, probably a bunch of solar panels. There is quite a bit of sun out there in Texas. Either way, a little earthquake activity there today out in the oil fields of the state of Texas. New Madrid Seismic Zone. I got 1.9 here. That's this area right here. Uh, nothing big going on there yet. Just a handful of smaller quakes. South America generally quiet. One little earthquake out in the Peru Chile Trench. That's going to be a 4.5 from early this morning. There's that earthquake down in the South Sandwich Trench from yesterday. Uh, we did see a little bit of uptick here off the, uh, the Rec James Ridge area south of Iceland. Uh, one yesterday and one today, a 4.6 along this divergent boundary zone, a little fracture area. Uh, one earthquake out in the Greece area. Looks like a 4.4 from yesterday. Look at the earthquake 3D program here. Oh, there's those earthquakes in the, the Rec James Ridge area. Some minor to moderate movement out here across the Mediterranean today. 
Uh, looks like areas around uh, the Afghanistan and areas here are getting hit pretty good today. Uh, look, look, the last one looks like a 4.5 eastern Afghanistan. Of course, we have seen some large-scale movement here across western Afghanistan in the last week or so. A little odd scene activity here, but something's uh, something's been picking up and brewing quite nicely out here. It looks like it's about ready to brew uh, across this area. Um, still a couple different zones that uh, have not seen any large-scale movement in quite some time. Mega quake potential out here across the Nepal and Himalaya mountain range, northern India. Um, there's been a lot of chat about the potential for mega quake activity out here in the subduction zone. And there's no doubt we can see some uh, large scale activity out here. It's been a little while since we've seen anything major going on across sections of this plate boundary. So we'll keep an eye on that area. Uh, one earthquake way up in Mongolia, 4.1 from yesterday. Uh, the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, last one shows a 5.0, 5.0 here into the Japan Trench, 172 kilometers deep, and one earthquake here from yesterday, that's going to be along the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. Um, there's that six-pointer here from the um, time period of last night in the western Indian Antarctica Ridge, south of Australia. Mixed bag of earthquake activity up north here. Uh, still keeping New Zealand in mind because they kind of sit within this plate boundary where we should see some movement when these divergent bound, uh, boundaries down here activate. Uh, but so far we haven't really seen anything major going on. Uh, last earthquake in this area here is at 4.2 deep into the Tonga Trench, almost 600 kilometers deep. Now let me pull up the GeoNet servers and see what we have here um, for the area of New Zealand sure I turned off the um, bells which I did an hour ago looks like 2.5 2.7 point two yesterday that was last night our time or uh, my time here along the west coast doesn't look like we got anything major going on yet but like I say we still watch this area of New Zealand uh, for some adjustment with all the uh, activity that's been um, taking place around the plate boundary but kind of skipping over New Zealand All right, anything else going on here across the globe? Big Island of Hawaii, getting some activity north here, um, away from the volcanoes. I'm not for sure what's going on with this USGS map. Sometimes it's just really glitchy, and it shouldn't be. Um, these earthquakes taking place up here are fairly deep. Not Not any kind of swarming or anything going on up here, but... Uh, fairly deep below the surface. A lot of times the weight out here of the Hawaii Island chain on the Pacific Plate tends to uh, create earthquakes there within the uh, Pacific Plate itself. I don't think those are associated with any specific volcanoes. Kilauea Volcano has dropped off in terms of earthquake activity. And the latest informational statement here from the HVO. Uh, let's see if they have it put out. They do shows that the volcano there on the big island is currently not erupting um, looks like things have calmed down slightly with the earthquake activity uh, let's go ahead and check out the earthquake or the uh, tilt meter here across the Hawaii area see what we got as far as any unusual activity here's the past two days of activity here I uh, did see a drop off here a while back back pretty significant one um, I don't know if this was adjustment or what that's quite the drop-off it's a little odd um, this is the past two days of inflation data we did see a little bit of uptick here yesterday but now we're starting to go back down uh, lack of earthquake activity deflation looks like we're gonna take a little pause here in the uh, in the elevated activity there across Kilauea volcano as far as um, you know what's going on there with the earthquake swarm and and high inflation rates south of the uh, summit region for now things are mellowing out but of course we'll continue to watch that uh let's see anything major going on here 5.2 philippines outside of manila that's from yesterday 
Uh, let's see, not a whole lot else going on here. A real quick glance at the potential cloud cover here for tomorrow uh, for the eclipse. This is for the time frame of a Saturday, 8 a.m. Here's a, the uh, time frames here. You can select different items here. Temperature, wind gust, sky cover is what we want, 8 a.m. Now the blue on this map, the blue on this map is going to be clear skies. Now if you look at the, um, pretty much it's going to be the darker regions here, that's cloud cover, almost 90%, 100% cloud cover. So when we look at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning during, during the annular eclipse here in Northern California where I'm at, I'm going to be underneath some thick clouds, unfortunately. Uh, also a good portion of Oregon up there as well. Remember in the darker uh, colors is the thicker cloud cover. In the blue, it looks like good portions of Nevada through Utah and Texas are in the go and able to be able to see the uh, annular eclipse tomorrow with no, no issues as far as cloud cover goes. Um, looks like maybe around Albuquerque and New Mexico there uh, you guys got some cloud cover to deal with so it's not going to be perfect optimal viewing conditions there uh, 11 a.m. Uh, does show quite a bit of cloud cover here across the Pacific Northwest and Northern California specifically and that's just you know I'm out of luck uh, it happens now, if this was going to be a total eclipse, I would drive somewhere to where I could see it. But it's a annular eclipse, ring of fire, which is pretty cool, uh, but nothing quite comparable to the uh, complete solar eclipse, which uh, is next year. I'll be out there in Texas, and hopefully it'll be clear. I'll find my way around there uh, to where I'll see blue sky somewhere out there in Texas or um, out there next year for the uh, total eclipse. But for tomorrow annular eclipse i'm still going to be up in the morning hopefully uh, i'll have a glimpse of the clear sky so at least i can get some pictures uh i'm not for sure if i'm going to live stream it now because of this allow this uh you know the thick cloud cover out here but uh, we'll see how it goes just uh you know bad timing <laughs> bad timing with the cloud cover and the uh the annular eclipse here so um, yeah, all right, well, we'll check that out tomorrow and see how, it, see what happens. I'll be up either way early in the morning to, uh, to see how dark it gets with the uh, sun being eclipsed out here, even with cloud cover. All right, uh, what else we got here? Space weather activity, pretty neutral very calm conditions for the most part here prevailing uh, within the sunspots of the sun got numerous sunspots out here quite a few of them in fact but uh, all of these are pretty rinky dink not a whole lot going on here in terms of uh, complexity so that's you know that's the story we do have another sunspot stretching around the eastern limb of the sun but uh, uncertain on if that's going to bring any enhancement here to the uh, solar flare threat. Right now, 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25. X flare, man, eh, still remains elevated at 5. I just don't see it, but that's that's my own eyes. And uh, we did see a little bit of uh, auroras kick up last night, surprisingly. Um, out of the blue for a short period of time, up around the 3 to 4 KP index. Um, I believe that was from a weak CME that uh, I don't think was really forecasted. Really not a whole lot forecasted either in the next coming days. Severe weather threat out here today. A uh, little bitty spot way up north in Iowa it looks like. Uh, and that includes a 5% chance for tornado probability. Fort Dodge area. Uh, also some wind and hail threats in there as well, but looks like mainly 5% chance, 2% chance of tornado in the green. So heads up if you're out there in Iowa today uh, for that severe weather potential. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Friday the 13th, play it safe out there. We'll catch you guys uh, back here sometime later tonight. Have a good one.